Earth right now has two separate moons, one of them being a mini moon. Now what happened was a few months ago, an asteroid passed close to the Earth. This is asteroid 2024 PT5, about 33 feet in diameter. And on September 29th, it got captured into a moon-like orbit and it will leave that moon-like orbit on November 25th. And so we've had a mini moon companion for about two months now. I presented on this mini moon back late September talking about the unusual astronomical events that occurred in October. And I said I'd provide an update for you. And so I've researched more into this mini moon now that we have more data available to us. And what I've found is very, very interesting. So buckle up and let's dive in. Let's begin by looking at the unique orbital characteristics of this mini moon, asteroid 2024 PT5. Here we have our inner solar system. We see the Earth's orbit there in blue. We see the asteroid's orbit there in white. You'll notice that they are almost identical, though there's a slight inclination to this mini moon orbit, and they are in a one-to-one -one resonance. You'll notice that it is below the ecliptic plane here, and then when it enters into this moon-like configuration, where it's temporarily captured by Earth's gravity, they are roughly in the same plane, and then it flies above as it then continues on. And so this is what happened starting the summer of this year. It flew in really close, and then actually got really close to the moon right here, before then entering into a moon-like orbit late in September. This will continue all the way till November 25th, and then it will zoom on uh, out through the rest of the year, and actually NASA is taking an interest in this. They'll be taking radar measurements of this mini moon in January of next year because they find it apparently of interest. And it is interesting because this is an asteroid that has gotten very close to our planet, has stayed close to our planet, entered into a temporary resonance with it, and has done so probably many times before. There are other near-Earth asteroids which have entered into this type of mini moon configuration before, uh, but it's not the most common event. It's not like it's happening every single month. It's more like every few years or greater that we have a temporary mini moon, and we may not often see them. This asteroid is only 33 feet in diameter. You'll notice that this is actually a spiral rotation around. So it starts off below, and then it'll actually end up above the orbit of the Earth. We see that again with our inner solar system here. We see the orbits, this asteroid orbit there has a negative inclination earlier in the year, and then it enters into the same plane before then zooming above the Earth there. So it's twisting around our planet, and for about two months it's in this mini moon orbit that you could say, and it's very interesting because it has a composition that's similar to the moon itself. So let's look at its light curve. Our temporary mini moon, asteroid 2024 PT5, was first discovered on August 7th of this year, 2024, and the same researchers who initially discovered it did a follow-up study on it late in September, gathering a whole bunch of different data points on it, calculating out its orbital trajectory, also taking information on its light spectra. And so we have a light curve for this asteroid which informs us about its surface composition. Here we see its light curve there in green, and we also see the light curve for an SV-type asteroid and also for a lunar Mare Brecca. And so it's very interesting that this asteroid, 2024 PT5, closely resembles that of both of these, but I would say more so resembles that of the lunar Mare, and that is what the researchers talk about in a recent paper that they have published. They think it may be of lunar origin, uh, past impact that ejected some remnants of the moon out into orbit. And because this is already at the same velocity and everything as the Earth system, it then enters into that one-to-one -one resonance with Earth. And so we really actually may be looking at a mini moon, not an asteroid from some passing you know, debris stream or something, but actually an asteroid of the moon itself that is then able to enter into temporary mini moon configurations. We'll talk about some of the archetypal significations of that later, but this is very likely a asteroid 33 feet in diameter that is of lunar composition based on the light curve data.
I first reported on our mini moon asteroid PT5 back in late September, among many others, but I wanted to research into it more because I found it very interesting. And so I started off today by reading that latest research paper from the original discoverers of this asteroid. I'm glad I did. It suggests it has that lunar origin, but I also went a step further and looked at its current sky position for today and also for the past few days. And that's where things get very interesting. So here we have some graphics from the Sky Live. I'll also put a link to them in the video description. Here we can see asteroid 2025 in the constellation of Ursa Minor. And you'll see that is extremely close to Kochab, a fixed star with a lot of interesting symbology. And so we've had asteroid 2024 pass over Kochab like this. It was actually conjunct Kochab on November 14th, which is just less than a day before the full supermoon that we had. And now it is moving on this way. And the specific degree point for Kochab is 13 degrees of Leo. So a lot of very interesting symbology with Kochab. Let's talk about it. Right now we have this mini moon, asteroid 2024 PT5, traveling around the Earth and during these critical moments with this full supermoon and also the transition of Pluto into Aquarius, it was conjunct Kochab. So we can understand more the significations of this transit of this mini moon by understanding the representations of Kochab. Let us start with the astronomical characteristics. It is an orange red giant with a mass about 1.5 times that of the sun, though some more recent estimates have it down to 1.3 times that of the sun but its radius is huge, 44 times that of the sun, much, much bigger, emits a lot more light, but because it has a greater surface area, it is at a lower Kelvin temperature than our sun. So it's almost like an inflated sun that is hypothesized to be what our sun will also do way out in the distant future. Its distance is about 130 light years away, again in the constellation Ursa Minor. Its apparent magnitude is 2.08, being the second brightest object in that constellation just behind Polaris. And its location in Western tropical astrology is 13 degrees and 11 arc minutes of Leo. I find that very interesting. I'll share why in just a little bit. But we can look to significations to understand what the mini moon passing over Kochab may entail for us. So. According to some, Kochab has a martial nature that is very similar to the energy of Mars, and that's common with fixed stars that have this orange-red color to them. And in Chinese astronomy, it represents D, meaning emperor. So if we synthesize all that together, Kochab represents a larger-than-life solar figure, because we're talking about a star here, who has or seeks the power of an emperor and is unafraid of using military power and might to achieve their objectives. And I think it also speaks to someone with, you know, this inflated ego because you have this normal solar mass, 1.5, 1.3 times out of the sun, but this massive radius and it's just pumping out so much light, but its temperature is lower. It has a lower vibration, but it has this much greater size. And so this is interesting because you have certain figures that really zone in on these significations with their moon placement at that specific degree of Leo. So for example, the Roman Emperor Nero, who very much, you know, Roman Emperor, all powerful, but also he was very violent and bloody, uh, bloodthirsty, you could say, very martial. His moon was at 12 degrees of Leo. Um, Maybe I shouldn't share this, but my moon is also at 12 degrees of Leo, though I'm very much not a violent person. So we hope that these energies evolve across time. There's also uh, in the Hellenistic practice of astrology, Mars is seen as the right hand man of the sun and used to achieve the aims of that solar consciousness. So there's the higher expression, there's also the lower expression. But with the mini moon conjuncting Kochab, I think we're seeing a few things. I think we are seeing effectively this kind of rise of prominence for these martial solar figures. And specifically, we'll talk about why I think that because we have this mini moon for asteroid 2024 PT5 last occurring in 1937. And that's a you know important date if you know it. Um, but I also think it represents because it's not the moon itself, it is an old fragment of the moon. Best evidence suggests that showing that you can have 
offshoots or not the biggest players right around the globe. You can have other people rise into positions of prominence if they embrace that solar energy and are willing to wield their Martian nature and hopefully do it benevolently. So you have the moon representing the people and then you have these lunar offshoots, smaller groups of people which can give you know, these solar figures and help them rise up to prominence. And so perhaps that's the energy that I myself am channeling, hopefully not that of Emperor Nero, uh, but let's go back and talk about 1937 when we last had this mini moon because the, the astronomers who found asteroid 2024 PT5, they were able to calculate out its orbit. They took a whole bunch of different measurements and the orbital calculations broke down in 1937, then going out to the future also broke down in 2085. The reason why is because that's when it la last got really close to the Earth. And then once you get into that very close configuration, it's impossible basically to calculate out the orbit with any certainty. And so you just can't go further back than that. So that's very likely when we had that last mini moon configuration and 1937, who was a grand emperor solar figure who was very much a uh, martial in nature back at that time? Well, you could think back to Nazi Germany, you could think back to Hitler. Uh, he's a, that's a perfect example of these significations. And so we have this dynamic playing out right now, and that's ending November 25th as it exits that lunar-like orbit, but it'll still be fairly close to the Earth for uh, you know, a couple more months going all the way out to January, it'll be about five lunar distances away from the Earth. That's when NASA will do their radar measurements of this asteroid. Um, but it's connected to the people because it is very likely an old fragment of the moon, connected to their emotions and the tides and shifts of public opinion and the sway of social processes. And uh, also I think it's representative, not just of these larger than life solar figures that are very much in the public eye for the majority of people on the planet, but also other people which can rise to prominence because this is a mini moon, it's not the moon itself. And so you can have these small little offshoots. I think it very much speaks to taking in your own solar energy and consciousness, being able to wield that Martian power benevolently and then rising up as a result of that. There you have the astronomy and the astrology for this mini moon, which leaves this moon-like orbit on November 25th. I'll let you fill in the rest as to who a larger than life solar figure who is very martial in nature could be for 2024 and into 2025. I don't wanna to get too political on this channel. There are a lot of those people out there in the world, but in general, we saw this mini moon in orbit around the earth back in 1937 and then we are likely to see it enter into a mini moon configuration again in 2085 based on the orbital calculations done by the uh, astronomers who first discovered asteroid 2024 pt5 now if you like this video please click that like button subscribe to see more also i have my planetary resonances e-course which is 15 hours of video content on topics exactly like this we talk about all the different planets in our solar system the inner planets we talk about the outer planets, the unique energetics of those planets, both like their orbital characteristics, for example, Venus and its Venus star configuration or Mercury and Mercury retrogrades, but also the synodic cycles of the outer planets, the archetypal energies that those entail. We look at the dwarf planets. We look at other astronomical objects like comets and centaurs. We talk about the astrological ages, binary star theory, planet X, the great year, and a whole bunch more. So if you like the sound of that, then 15 hours of video content presented my, by me is available to you. You can click this box right there to go to the Planetary Residences eCourse page and use the code LUCKYDAY to sign up for a pretty nice discount. So hope that you do that. I know you'll love it. You'll learn a lot in the process. Again, I've been your host, Stefan Burns, wishing you all well, and I'll see you all in the next video.